is you must have dead material in your aquarium if life is going to be able to thrive. If you are trying to cycle your tank, you're wasting your fish's time. <laughs> There's actually no such thing as cycling a tank. It's a, a condition that, that in point of fact does not exist. It's a myth. It's an old myth. It's a popular one. It's one everybody's involved in perpetrating, but it's a myth. Tanks do not cycle. In point of fact, the whole idea of, a, of, of the nitrate cycle is a myth. It doesn't exist. You either have bacteria that breaks down ammonia, and uh, while I'm on the subject, some of the most important research that's being done currently demonstrates that, in point of fact, bacteria do not break down ammonia. Archaea. Archaea break down ammonia. What's archaea? Nobody really knows. Archaea are a kingdom of life, foreign to bacteria, foreign to fungus, foreign to any cellular structure that exists as a completely unique, vast family of life that we know virtually nothing about. Well, we don't, so, so as a result, we don't need to get off the subject, do we? Nevertheless, here's the point. The point is that ammonia is either being broken down or it's not. It, um, it doesn't, it doesn't have it a little bit and then a little more and then, and then, uh, you know, something. It doesn't, it doesn't cycle. There's no such thing as a cycle. It's a meaningless term. What does happen? Well, what happens is that there are hundreds perhaps even thousands of processes that occur in an aquarium. And all of them are important. Point of fact, ammonia is important. It's not probably the most important, but it would be difficult to determine which is the most important. What is most important is that when you set your aquarium up to begin with, at the very beginning, when you set up your aquarium, it needs to be able to function. That is, all of these processes need to be able to occur. And how are they going to occur? Well, they're going to occur if you put them in the tank. So, for example, there are any number of slime molds, fungus, and bacteria that are critical to having a stable, balanced, healthy environment. So how, do, how, how did those molds, those fungus, and those bacteria get in the tank? 
Well, we can either wait around for a spore to come out of the air and hit the water and land and start duplicating. And that'll take a while, a few years at a minimum. Or we can put them in the tank. And my suggestion is that we just go ahead and put them in the tank. That way, we know they're there, don't we? Where did they come from? Where do we get them? My friend Laura will be happy to explain where they come from. Laura is a biologist. She is a certified biologist. She understands biology. And she understands specifically what we're talking about here. So I'm going to let Laura explain to you a little bit about what we need to do to get in the tank, what needs to be in the tank in order for it to be able to function. Hi, Father Fish. Well, so often when we're starting a new aquarium, we're told that we need to grab a bottle of quick start um, liquid bacteria and add that to our aquarium in order to establish um, nitrifying bacteria within our aquarium. But unfortunately, there's a flaw in that. Um, and that flaw is that bacteria, by and large, is not free living within our aquariums. It actually lives on surfaces um, and that would be in the form of what we like to call biofilm. So when you add that bottle of liquid start bacteria, unfortunately it takes it a long time to form a biofilm and get established on the surfaces within your aquarium, um, if it ever gets established. So a better method would be to go to your local pond, perhaps, or your local stream, river, or lake and pull out um, a bunch of twigs and leaves and rocks if you're lucky enough to be able to get a few rocks um, and place those into your aquarium. And if you can't get out into nature and um, assemble materials that are already colonized by biofilm that way, um, if you're lucky enough and you have a friend who maybe has an aquarium that's already established, you can take some used filter media and use that in your aquarium setup because used filter media is um, already colonized by bacteria. And in this way, you don't have to wait for the bacteria to become established on, on surfaces. It's already established from day one and it's ready to go to work for you. Thank you, Laura. Are you clearer now than you were before? Okay. So now we've got all of this material in here. And we've got water in it. Let's go ahead and put some plants in. And while we're at it, let's put a few fish in. Just go ahead and do it. We're on approximately day two. And we have fish in our tank right away. Mercy! How is that even possible? Well, it's really quite possible because we put in the tank everything that that environment needs in order to be able to thrive, to survive, to thrive, to grow and develop, and it becomes stronger and healthier. So, now what happens? There are some other issues that are very important to understand. Don't need to really do much about them, but it is important to understand what they are. It has to do with well, 
ammonia and other nitrogen compounds are far less toxic than pit shops make it out to be. Decomposition and dissolved organic carbon are way more important to fish health than nitrogen. It's worth saying whether a microbe processes ammonium or ammonia is important in nature but less so in an aquarium, simply because if you deplete the free ammonia in a solution like that, the reaction mediating how much is present in the aquarium will simply replenish it in short order. Things get more complicated at the very large scale like an entire ecosystem. Basically everything your fish breathe in or regularly contact, they need to make an immune system response to. This exhausts the fish and leaves it weak to actual pathogens, many of which are typically present on their bodies already but controlled in a sub-pathogenic population in a healthy fish. Generally, the thing that contributes to this by far the most is bacteria in the water, which in everything except black water tanks is directly linked to dissolved organic carbon in the water. This is also why food with less carbs fouls the water less. I think ammonia tests etc have a place, but it's mainly just for checking is my filter doing the bare minimum, and do I have enough nitrates for my plants. Do you understand substantially more now than you did before? So let's recap a little bit. You want to set up a, uh, a tank, an aquarium, and you want it to be able to support life. So you're going to, you're going to put it through your ammonia cycle, aren't you? No, you're not going to do that because you don't need to. Because once you do things the way we're suggesting, that ammonia cycle is already in there. It's going strong. It's happening. As well as a hundred other cycles, a hundred other processes, natural processes that need to occur in order for your tank to be able to thrive. Keep one thing in mind that's most important. Perhaps the single most important factor to understand about your aquarium. Now, I will preface it by saying you need to be careful about this. And it will be obvious why that's true once I state what this is. What this is, is you must have dead material in your aquarium if life is going to be able to thrive. Life, all life, lives on life that is dead, on the breakdown of life. So it is that breakdown that's occurring that's providing the nutrients, the foundation for new and continued life. Understanding your tank in this way will help you understand what's really going on and what you need to do to set up and maintain your natural aquarium. Have a blessed day. Please subscribe to our channel, click the like button, and be sure to ring that bell so we can continue to send you videos. Bye for now.